Today I'm headed to Highland High School again. As part of my day job, I get to go there, oh, about once a week. But today, we're gonna go explore some of those places that very few people ever got to see at Highland High School. Seeing how I was the custodian there at one time, I got to know the building well pretty intimately. And I got to go into places that, uh, well, when I went to school, there was a lot of rumors about what that place used to be because nobody had a key to it. So we're gonna look at some of those things today on Echoes of the Chalkboard, Highland High School, part number two. My first real clear memory of Highland was walking through these doors, which are now the main entrance in the center of the building. There used to be a big awning over this area. Well, I remember walking through these doors, and I think it was 1977. I was still in junior high school, and I was there for some event, and I remember thinking about how one year from then I was going to be going to Highland. Across from the main office, there was this little area that used to lead outside to the courtyard. But in the late 90s, when they did the retrofit of the building, they blocked all of this area up and they removed the beautiful windows that looked out over the courtyard. On that landing at the bottom there and around the corner, there was a door. And much speculation was where that door led because it was always locked. Well, here it is open and you can see it just leads to the dirt underneath the building. Actually down there, it's I think we call it the phone room as, as I recall. It's where all the phone lines are to the building. Heading south into the main foyer, you can see that the doors, the foyer doors, have been changed over the years. When they did the retrofit in the late 90s, they actually put the doors where the ram used to be. But the foyer is still very inviting and very, very beautiful. Looking straight ahead in this photo, near where the school seal is, there is this strange thing. It is a button right in the middle of the terrazzo floor, right right in the poured floor and it was kind of funny every time that we would burnish that floor we would see this button very few of us know exactly where that is many years ago this is where the hospitality room used to be in the foyer now it overlooks the cafeteria this whole area used to be where the art rooms were I mentioned the ram. The ram has now been moved to the west side of the foyer. And there's this uh, art room, uh, art gallery room that has uh, been enclosed by a bunch of glass. It's actually kind of uh, neat looking, kind of a fun little thing to have there on the west end of the foyer. So as I turn to the left, where this display case is, used to be where the payphones were located. Wow, you haven't seen a payphone in a school in a long time. And I remember many a time that uh, myself or one of my friends would actually call me in sick to school from these particular phones. Letting south down the hallway, here is the shop hallway. And man, I sure spent a lot of my high school days here between Southwell Small Engines class and the auto shop itself. This is where I did spend a considerable amount of my high school time. Just past the drinking fountain to the right in this picture is the west entrance to the auditorium area. And you'll notice this one door that was always locked. And what was behind that? What? Where did it go? Well, the answer isn't quite so sinister. Actually, this goes down to what used to be called a fallout shelter. Uh, there was actually those big barrels of drinking water and, and other sanitation kits that were kept under the building. And here's the stairs. They just go down. It used to be a big open area that was actually used for costumes and whatnot for the, uh, for, for the plays. However, when they did the retrofit, they ran a, a bunch of new pipes and some air conditioning vents and whatnot through there. It's a very difficult area to navigate through now. In this next picture taken down in that area about 10 years ago when we had a flood down there you can see the civil defense barrels floating in the water. Anyway, now on to the place that I spent most of my high school days, the auto shop. As you can see, the lifts have changed dramatically. Some of the things have really changed, but then there are some of the uh, features that are still identifiable from when we went there. As you walk out the shop, you can see that area 
where we used to park all the time and just hang out there by the guardrail. And lots of great memories made here. This is actually where I met Dave Knopfsinger for the first time. We had been introduced in class, I suppose, but he had called me up and said, hey, I see your car's over there at the shop. Uh, are you going to go up and work on it? When you do, I'd love to join you. So he actually rode his bike over there. We met one day and, and became lifelong friends. The shop used to be only two bays, and this third one on the right was added in either 77 or 78, but something we got to enjoy while I was up there at Highland. The driver's ed range had various memories for pretty much anybody who ever went to Highland, whether you remember your range time or for us, it was out there throwing football and having football games instead of being in class or assemblies like we should have been. And this view of the west side of the driver's ed range. I remember a few times that we'd pull all the way up to the wall there and drag race all the way through the driver's ed range. We had some great times, especially laying rubber there. But of particular interest is this picture here. Here we were back in the day taken from that same area. You can see the trees are sure a lot different back, uh, back then than they are now. But uh, this picture of uh, the guys and I back in the good old days um, one of the things that's really uh, not changed much is this view here. Uh, we take a shot of Dave's uh, car looking towards the building. And other than a few uh, new enclosures for the driver's head cars, that, that hasn't changed much. So continuing on, let's see what the football field looks like these days. like the football field has really changed so has the old cafeteria yes this is if you were looking through the doors into the cafeteria well this is what you would see now uh, this is now the art space or the art rooms and looking to the left from there you now have what's the new cafeteria there's the hallway that always used to go down by the art rooms but uh, as you can see it's now by the serving area and the uh, the cafeteria there on the left hand side really big change continuing on towards the red hall there is now an entrance to the cafeteria the new cafeteria at the intersection of the red hall and where the courtyard used to uh, meet now stepping into the Red Hall, there is this entrance out to the courtyard. You can see how different things are now from whenever you were there last. And the Red Hall itself, actually looking out over the courtyard, um, some things have changed, and again, some things haven't. The Red Hall is still beautiful, and the courtyard is still a beautiful place to be. One thing that really has changed is off to the right here, where there used to be the entrance to the gym, to the main gym. Well, that's now a big sheer wall, and the entrance to the gym is on the north and the south end of the gym. These doors are long gone. So turning around and looking to the north in the Red Hall, now they have all of these display cases lined up and lighted up. And they look very impressive. As you walk in that area down there by the gym, it's a very impressive look to the building. I think it is absolutely lovely. Now, as we turn right to the cross hall, and if we walk down onto this landing as if we were going down uh, to that lower area, remember this vent and remember this one door? There were some great rumors back in the day, and the rumor was that this was the area where the old jail cells were from the old territorial prison that was there in Sugar House Park. Remember this? And you remember those rumors? Well, let's open the door and let's see what's actually there. Here we are right by the gym on this landing. And this is the this is the face. So sorry to disappoint you, there's nothing there. This is just another entry point to underneath the building and the pipes and things such as that. So trudging up the stairs after our disappointment. It's not a far walk to the library to the new entrance to the library it used to be in the main foyer there but no longer it's now in the cross hall and uh, it's changed a little bit the lights were off that day and uh, just did not much to see there so 
we're going to go back to those stairs and continue up towards the second floor. And remember the balcony there on the north end? Well, here it is. Uh, the new bleachers that have been pulled out on it, uh, they're actually really nice bleachers, but uh, the balcony looks kind of the same as it used to when I went there. So I'll turn around and I'll continue up to the second floor cross hall. And the cross hall hasn't changed a whole lot. Uh, there is a new shear wall that's been put in partway through the hallway, but it still overlooks the um, courtyard and it's a beautiful, beautiful view. So there was some construction on the second floor the day that I went. So I went up to the third and you might remember towards the north end, about three quarters of the way down, there was this uh, staircase that went all the way down to the, to the bottom floor and it went out to the uh, teacher's parking area. The window's still there. It's beautiful. Some new uh, handrails have been put in. So I'm going to go down this staircase all the way down to the very first floor. And here on the north end of the library, just as you are about to go out to the old uh, teacher's parking lot, there was this door that has a big vent in it. And it was some place we always wondered, where does that go? What does it do? What mysteries lie within there? Well, let me tell you, it uh, goes here. There's a big incinerator down there. You can see that the elevator, it, this is where the elevator terminates, goes all the way down to this level. So what we figure is when the building was built, this incinerator was built so that the custodians could take the trash from the upper floors and burn it down here in this incinerator. Obviously, that hasn't been used since uh, probably the late 60s, early 70s. Well, it looks like I've had enough of being underneath the building for a while. So I'm going to head all the way up to the third floor. And I got some great memories up here. Uh, when I was a custodian back in the early 90s, I remember cleaning this floor every night. And particularly here on the north end, I remember as a student, my junior year, spending some time in Mrs. Boyce's math class. Well, I had to repeat the class again my senior year. It wasn't because I failed the class necessarily. It was because I had too many absences and tardies. I had a girlfriend who had a locker right outside this class. And I would be there talking with her until the bell rang and then I'd step in and of course I was late. Well, I think that's going to about conclude our tour for the day. We'll look out the north windows of the third floor. What a beautiful view that's always been. I've always enjoyed that even when I worked there. Well, join us again. I think we'll do a third part here before too long. We'll cover some other areas and uh, thanks for watching.